Yo, what up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with this time a user selected video um, voted on by you guys in the community tab. Uh, this poll was up for about a day and a half I want to say. I uh, got about 100 votes on it, like around 97 to 100. I uh, asked last week I made a wide receiver video about Curtis Samuel, which by the way, if you have not checked out, go over there and check it out. I'll have the eye pop up with it right now. And then I asked what wide receiver would you guys want to see next? You guys see the results? Let's get into it. So the Giants this year, this past year, I already talked about it in that Curtis Samuel video, were pretty bad on offense. We were 31st offense in the league just behind the new york jets and then when it comes specifically to, pa to the passing game since we're talking wide receivers here we were 29th in the league so we were not a good team when it came to the offense this past year that is not a secret what makes it even worse and what definitely channeled into that what was definitely a big factor into our passing game and overall offense being so horrible was the wide receivers dropping passes and this may shock you guys in terms of how bad it is. It might not shock some of the fans who kind of been keeping track. But the Giants this past NFL season ranked top 10. Specifically, they are the team with the 7th most dropped passes in the entire NFL. We have 22 drop passes ranks 7th most in the entire NFL. Now, here's why this situation is even worse than it is like because if you're seventh most already on this list it's bad but this is why it's worse than it seems we share this spot you know what i'm saying we're in the company of tampa bay kansas city atlanta detroit pittsburgh and dallas without even going to look at the stat sheet i, I can guess that most of you already guessed that most of these teams are teams that air it out and there's a direct correlation between how much you pass you know how many passing yards per game you average and just how much your quarterback airs it out and drop passes there's a direct correlation simply put the more you pass the more drop passes you're gonna have so it makes sense for some of these teams to be up here like kansas city who are the number one passing offense in the league like tampa bay who are the number two passing offense in the league like atlanta falcons who are the number five passing offense in the league like the Dallas Cowboys, number 8th, the Detroit Lions, number 10. The only other team here that's not in that top 10 is Pittsburgh, but they're still way better than us. They're at 15th in the league in terms of passing offense. It makes sense for those teams to be up there. It doesn't make sense for the Giants to be up there at 29th. We pass the ball some of the least amount of times, and that passing offense is one of the worst in the league. This is why. These drops, it just does not add up. So what's the receiver that we could get to try and fix that, you know, step in the right direction? A number one guy that's proven himself, Allen Robinson of the Chicago Bears. And most people already know the story on Allen Robinson, man. The 6'2", 216-pound physical possession wide receiver that has proven himself as being one of the best number one wide receivers in the league with a lack of quarterback talent. Robinson is one of the more, I don't even know if you could call it underrated anymore. He's just one of those guys that not a lot of people think about when you think of top 10 receiver in the league. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that with who he's played with. But before we even get to that, let's talk about just Robinson's production despite that. In 2019, he played 97% of the snaps for the Bears and ranked fourth overall in targets with 153 balls thrown his way. He had 27% of the targets of the entire Chicago Bears team thrown his way. That's absolutely massive. He led not just the Chicago Bears, but the entire NFL in terms of contested catch rate and red zone catch percentage. Allen Robinson in 2019 had a 79.3% success rate against man coverage, which ranks in the 98th percentile, and an 83.7% against press coverage, which ranks in the 97th percentile. Both of those are top 10, not only that year, but in NFL history, in terms of how good he is when it comes to catching the football. Allen Robinson is a dude, simply put, if you throw the ball to him, he's gonna come down with it. Now, I'm not saying he is this player, even though I think he's not that far off from being, you know, in terms of overall talent and overall wide receiver, 
kind of reminds a lot of people of DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins, a dude with just a extr absurd, you know, extremely wide catch radius, can catch any ball that you put up there to him. Kind of like that. That's what Allen Robinson does. You could even argue he maybe he does it better because of the quarterbacks that he's played with. And because the fact that Robinson gets open with his route running ability and with his hands. He's not really an explosive type of guy in terms of downfield. He can't get downfield, but it won't be because of his speed. It's just because of how smooth he is in, in his route running and how good his technique is. And that's what allows him to get open. Now in 2020, this past year, COVID year, weird year for the Bears as well. They had two quarterbacks playing back there. Mans did it again. He finished sixth in receptions in the entire league with 102. He saw the third highest number of targets with 151. Had 25% of the Bears total, you know, targets. So that's from 27% to 25, still a huge amount. Finished out the year with 1,250 yards, which was ninth overall in the NFL, had six touchdowns. The 102 receptions marked him as just one of six wide receivers to surpass 100 receptions this season. Once again, two different quarterbacks in Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles. And with Mitch Trubisky, I think we all know the story on him. I don't even need to talk about him. Nick Foles, not what he was that 2017 postseason. Uh, you know, there's a reason he got benched for Trubisky again this season here. And Allen Robinson's been doing this for years, man. Essentially, since his second year in the league, 2015. Oh, yeah, by the way, he was taken in that kind of historic wide receiver class in 2014. The same one that Odell was taken in. Robinson was a second rounder. But since 2015, his sophomore season, where he really broke out onto the scene, he's been doing this type of job. He's averaged since that season um, 140 targets, 81.6 receptions, 1,086 yards, and 7.4 touchdowns. Now, uh, the stat that I just included is excluding one year where he was injured, where he only played one one game, and I think he tore his ACL or something. But even if you put that in there, he would average uh, 68 receptions, 117 targets, 908 yards, and six touchdowns. That's still pretty impressive. And you know, the quarterbacks we're talking about here, Blake Bortles, Chad Henney, Mitch Trubisky, Nick Foles. Remember the comparison I threw about DeAndre Hopkins earlier? That's seeming a lot more like Hopkins right now, right? Except Hopkins up, up, only up until recently got a good quarterback in Watson. And then when he traded to Arizona, you know, had another good quarterback in Kyler Murray. But this is not like Allen Robinson's a poor man's DeAndre Hopkins or anything. No, he's his own guy. And he's a legit wide receiver in the NFL. A legitimate top 10 talent, maybe right outside that top five. And he's going to do Daniel Jones wonders. He's going to, oh my God, can you guys imagine? How many drop passes were there this year? Oh yeah, 22. I gave you the stat earlier. How many times did Daniel Jones toss the ball up to a contested catch that we all expect our receivers to come down with and they just drop it? How many times does he put the ball in the right place, but they just can't get their hands quite on it? Or they do get their hands on it and they just can't come down with it. They lose control of it by the time they hit the ground. Or even worse, how many times did Daniel Jones thrown the ball to a receiver that's either wide open or has good separation, good ball placement, and by all means, it should be a catch, and for some reason, they drop it. With Allen Robinson, that ain't happening, okay? That, that is not happening. And even, even if you think Daniel Jones is not the guy, all right? He's better than Mr. Trubisky, okay? He is better than Mr. Trubisky. He's better than Blake Bortles. He's definitely better than Chad Henney. And you know what? He's better than Nick Foles as well. Or maybe some of you guys think he's on the same level as Nick Foles. It doesn't matter. He's better than most of the quarterbacks that Allen Robinson has had. So to answer the question, that's the title of this video. I'm pretty sure I'm going to title it something like, should the Giants sign Allen Robinson? Yes, 100%. They should definitely sign Allen Robinson. He's the best wide receiver out in the market right now. And he's currently one of the best wide receivers in the entire NFL. You can't pass up on something like that for your quarterback. Unfortunately, our cap space is going to be tough in terms of signing him because he's going to demand a lot of money. He's going to demand a $20 million plus contract and he deserves it. I want to get that out there. He deserves a $20 million plus contract because he's earned it. The Giants, I just don't know if we could afford it. So in order to sign him, we're going to have to finagle our way into some more cap space, which I already have a short, you know, part of my video out on that already. It can be done by cutting certain players. I'm just not comfortable with cutting some, you know, particularly one player in Kevin Zeitler. And in addition to that, we have to kind of keep our defense together if we want to get this thing rolling. So it's like, is Allen Robinson in the future? 
Would I be mad if we sign him? Absolutely not. It's, even if it means we have to sacrifice somebody like, say, uh, Dalvin Thompson or Leonard Williams, no, I wouldn't be mad. I, I would not because it's something we need on the offensive side. I can understand it. What I would prefer if I had to choose between the two is to stick with the defense, though. But you guys let me know. What do you think? Because he's going to command a lot of money. Would you sign him if it means that, you know, we're going to lose a couple of guys? Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you all think. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.